Hello and welcome back again. If you are seeing this face for the first time, oh, welcome my dear. Let's look at the main subject of today, Apostle Joshua Selman. Sir, so how are you doing? Hope you are doing fine. Yeah, um, you know, uh, you say that you are not on social media. And we know you are not on social media. And we know you are not on social media. But you see, yeah, the, the person watching now, those who are watching now, they are watching this video because your name has been mentioned. You see, ever since you went and... Not as if you went for that anyway. Ever since you collected a souvenir from uh, Archbishop Duncan Williams, I did three videos. <laughs> Imagine you know, three videos trying to explain to these people that that was not Freemasonry. That it was gift that you were given you know, because Oga has been sharing the sword to different people. But I also told them that in case it has any significance or what I say spiritual meaning, now guy himself where they share the sword give you nine sabi. Not be like say you too sabi because you are not saying you you have opened now you talk up say you have opened yourself lavishly to the body of Christ. So I know say for you respect, honor, everything, stay inside. So anybody you can just fraternize with. Uh, anybody because of her uh, honor and uh, her so i understand your person don't be like say i get personal beef with you i just uh, wonder for your children those who enjoy watching you those who enjoy listening to you those who you know i read the comments how they many claims they have made very wonderful you are doing amazingly well your attention is all the way up here and it's, it makes sense why many of these people want to also associate with you because if they mingle with you, whether they are of God or not of God, which you know me, I don't know now, as I know the spiritual ranking and the dimensions of the kingdom, like they will say, uh -huh. but I just choose not to do the labeling. The reason why this video now is coming now again is because some people have still been dragging that issue. And you, you have not come out as I come and explain to the people what the sword means. None of you, all of you keep quiet, Jerry is a keep quiet. Even Archbishop Duncan Williams himself, okay, he's the one sharing. So those who are following him know exactly what it means. He's a normal thing at, it is, at, at his church to be praying with the sword. Sword, follow your enemy, sword. So far not to wish to live, blah, blah, blah. That one, Nadem and Ghana. <laughs> Ghana, that is civil post own business. Yeah, but this is Nigeria. Listen, you see this woman now? Come out first. This woman, all of una. You see this woman? She don't come, come, they talk about the sword again. Someone sent me this video on TikTok. I say, yay! TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. I make we listen to the woman as she go talk. Because I want to talk about the things that she has talked about. You hear me? Okay, listen to her. So, responding to this comment and many other comments like it in the previous video I made this morning, I knew when I made that video that many of you with your men of God sickness and syndrome is going to come after me because I put a clip of Joshua Salmon. Let's look at the evidence. Here we go. So, this is Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams and he is the one that gave Joshua Salmon the sword. Look at the sword that he poses with. I want you to remember that sign that we call the Star of David. We're going to come back to it in a second. And that over there is Pastor Jerry Easy. He was also given a sword by the Archbishop. I want you to look at the sword and look at the symbol on the sword and we'll come back to it. So Joshua Salmon was not the only one that received a sword from the Archbishop. Jerry Easy received one too. Here we have another picture of Archbishop Williams. He's got the same sword and it's got the Star of David. But what people don't know, this star that they call a Jewish, the Jewish Star of David, is actually called a shut corner in the Freemasonry world. This is the original or the origin of the shut corner symbol. It comes from Hindu demonic worship and from pagan Buddhism. 
that is the real meaning of the Star of David that was adopted by not Israelites but Zionists that are Freemasons because in the Freemasons they believe all gods are enlightenment and all gods fall under Lucifer and Lucifer is the master of enlightenment. If you go onto YouTube and you type in Archbishop Williams Freemasonry link, you will see that he has very strong links to the Freemasons. He speaks about it proudly. He wears the Freemasonic ring on his finger and the sword that he gave Salmon has the shut corner, six point star, and the sword that he gave Jerry has the Freemason compass with the G. So to tie this whole thing together in three minutes, Joshua Salmon did a Knights Templar Masonic ritual on stage with the sword. He received the Knights Templar welcome into the Masonic Lodge from the Archbishop and so did Jerry Easy. So before you people come for me with your pastor syndrome and your man of God syndrome, please do your research. There are wolves in sheep clothing on the pulpit. Ask the So she was about to say that you should ask the Holy Spirit. And you heard her use the word pastor syndrome. Okay, for me, maybe she is not that, or maybe it's not been long she's been talking about things happening in the church or talking about when you say pastor syndrome, that's where you see me say your God, the God you have made for yourself. You understand? Because let's look at this critically right now. Okay. Now, if you believe what she has said, please be bold enough to say, yes, what she's saying is right. That Joshua Sermon and Jerese are part of Freemasons based on that. Just tell me in the comments. You don't have to just be sincere. Now, I still stand by my assertions that that was just a souvenir. For those who follow me, you know how we do things right here. So she said the one that he gave, Joshua Sermon, had the Star of David, which he calls the Shakona. <laughs> so funny. And the one he gave Jerry is a which, of course, he is deceived by this logo right here, is the one that has the Freemason signed with the G. Which is of course a lie. The sword that he gave Salmon has the shut corner, six point star, and the sword that he gave Jerry has the Freemason compass with the G. So let's look at the main video because this is what he was showing right here. Now if you scroll down on YouTube, for those of you watching me on Facebook or something, my videos might not pop up as the first view video, but this I made a video about this. This one video, this is two video. I think it was up to three videos I made about the subject. So let's look at the main video itself posted by Archbishop Duncan Williams on this. What you see clearly right here is the same sword. The same sword. Not not uh, the Freemason sign with the G like you saw in the thumbnail that was a little bit deceptive, even though that is what many people that talked about this was, were portraying. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say right here. Because if you look at the video of one of his sons, Bishop Asere, he gave the same sword to. Come on. It's the same sword. If it has any other meaning aside to that, I would say it's Archbishop Duncan Williams himself that would have the significance or the meaning to that. If you watch my previous videos, he's given the same sword to politicians. He's given the same sword to people that are not in ministry. You've looked at that and I promised you I was going to look at something else which is the horns he uses. But you see, this sword, if it's Freemasonry like this woman is claiming, and look at looking at the Shakona she's talking about, Shiva and the connection and all that, if you are into Indian religion, you will get to understand. When I say Shiva, you understand what I mean. But I try not to go deep into these things because... Um, I want to stay in the context of Christianity. That's why if you are talking about certain things in Christianity, it becomes very interesting that you are willing to have these conversations. Now here's a point I'm trying to make. The hexagram has a lot of representation, so would I say a lot of meanings, connotations to it, depending on whatever you want, however you want to say it. Everyone keep looking at the Freemason sign and then looking at the hexagram. Do they in any way look alike? Look at the Freemason sign. Look at the hexagram. Do they look alike? 
do they look alike? So are we going to say like the entire nation of Israel that are all Freemasons because on their flag that particular sign is there? Or if you are going to go back, I've talked about it before, Nigeria's history, are we going to say that Nigerians are all Freemasons because of that? But looking at this right now, look at this picture on the side. These are people that are into bodybuilding that after they have, when they get to win the title, they are given the same sword as a souvenir. Are you going to say that these bodybuilders themselves are Freemasons or they have been initiated into Freemasons that they are given a sword to pose with or they are given a sword as a trophy after doing all the uh, showing your body and all that? Think about that for a moment. I told you people in my video, if you want this sword yourself, go to the market and go and buy it. It is there on Amazon, go and buy it. That is where Duncan Williams got his. He bought it online. But I, I, I ordered this Mais eu, I and, and they flew it to my, from America venu de that I want to present to Bishop. À it's a new sword. It's not as if it was made specially or something. I don't know if you understand. If you still go online and get, go and type. You see, what she's saying right now is just another representation of the hexagram being used in another religion. Do you understand? Because when you look at this right now, I, I just, sometimes it's just funny when I look at how, you see, it's one thing for you to like someone, it's one thing for you to hate someone and then just want to speak anything hateful about the person. I've been doing this over time to know what it means to face facts and then keep whatever sentiments I have about someone aside. So far as what is a lie, is a lie, is a lie. Now, that is what I believe on my platform. I don't believe what this woman herself is saying. You understand? Yes, of course, someone can be wove in sheep clothing. We have looked at a couple of teachings of Dr. Salman that's, that are very questionable. But what you saw right there was not anything Freemasonic, um, was not any form of initiation. Because we can likewise say that these particular people right now that are Freemasons because they got the sword. I've even had people say that, um, <laughs> it's so funny. I've even had people say that my, my logo, anyway, I don't blame some of you because if you have been watching me since 2018, I guess you will know what the logo means already by now. That my logo is Freemason. I laugh sometimes in the comment. Why? Because when I look at you people now, when I, I when I am being the one analyzing and discussing about these things, me I am analyzing. You you people say I'm using canal mind, right? I am canal, I am using my senses. When you look at the sword and then say it's Freemasonry and all that, are you using your canal mind or are you using your spiritual mind? Think about that for a moment. So it's okay for us to have different opinions. I can clearly disagree with her. But one, what, what really gets to lead to um, conversations like this being prolonged about, because some of you, in fact, you don't like, would you even like someone you call your pastor or your papa to be discussed in a negative light? No, because this is someone you believe in. This is someone you believe that hearing him would take you to heaven. Maybe that's how some of you think. But you see that pastor syndrome she's talking about, that, ex that is exactly one issue we have in the body of Christ today. When you see white and say this is white, or you see black and call it black, you see people that will come and see that thing the same way you see it, but decide to say, no, I don't see it the way you see it. And the next thing, they start showing the pastor syndrome, where they will now start crossing and start fighting and this. But you know that in the end, number one, you are giving engagement to the person that is talking about that. You are pushing the video up the more. Number two, what I would advise you to do is stop following those platforms. I, I, I keep saying it here, but people say, oh, George, this, no, it's not really all about the views. I know that no matter what, I have a community. There's a community that really care about the information I bring about what is happening in the body of Christ. So I don't need everyone to be part of what is going on right here, what we discuss right here. Don't be part of the community. Don't, don't join. We can disagree, yes, all right, but when you bring that whole pastor syndrome and then you start talking in a way that is so unchristianly. You see how I sound respectful to all these people when I talk about them, but I deal on the issues? 
exactly. When I see some of those elements, come on. I rapture you immediately. One button, I block you, you are gone. One thing you have to understand is that what happened there was not in any way Freemasonry. All right? It was, it's just, um, we looked at that significantly. I don't want to repeat myself again. You can watch my previous videos on that on YouTube. Archbishop Duncan Williams, yes, of course, what she said is right. He has Freemason, Freemason ties. He himself said that his own father was a Freemason. You understand? So, but does it mean that because his father was a Freemason that he himself is a Freemason? Not exactly. Do you understand? But it's really important that when we talk about these things and make assertions like this, she is talking right now, I'm very confident because she's talking based on facts, facts that she sees. And it's one thing for you to, just like how you get to read the Bible. If you believe in fighting, you have to make the Bible agree to your concept of what you believe about fighting. If you don't believe in fighting, you can use the same Bible to explain that fighting itself is obsolete. I don't know if you understand. So, it is one thing for you to be objective. It's one thing for you to be just subjective and then try to read meanings, the meanings you want into anything. But for you to be truly objective, you have to keep your sentiments aside. Sometimes, your preconceived opinions may not really be what exactly it is. If you take a deep life, because right now, everybody is talking about the sword. So in, you have to now ask yourself, in one co what context have the same sword been used for? Anyway, take inventory of your thoughts and um, tell me what you think in the comments.